Hello and welcome to Northwest Bosnia and Herzegovina. I'm David Bailey, an Englishman in the Balkans, and this YouTube channel is all about life in Bosnia Herzegovina, and more importantly, the north of Bosnia and Herzegovina, where uh, Tam, my wife, and I live. We also do travels around the rest of the country, and of course, the rest of the Western Balkans as a region. So if that's something that you'd be interested in, finding out about culture, food, and traditions, and daily life here, then why don't subscribe uh, to the channel, click that bell so that you get notified of every single post that we make. And of course, please do share with your friends. On this video, I catch up with Amira, who's from Malaysia. She studies in Amman in Jordan and recently came to Bosnia Herzegovina on holiday. Together with her three friends, they toured around Sarajevo, Mostar and came north to Banja Luka before taking their plane homeward bound via Brussels. Tam and I spent only a little time with them, but they really seemed to enjoy themselves. So I asked Amira that when she got back to Amman in Jordan and settled back into her daily routine, if we could chat over Skype so that I could find out what she really felt about her holiday here. So for the next 12 to 15 minutes or so, this is me a little earlier on catching up with Amira to find out more about what she felt about Bosnia and Herzegovina. <laughs> Amira, you are from Malaysia. You are in uh, Amman in Jordan. So my first question to you is, why did you decide, what made you want to come to Bosnia and Herzegovina on holiday? Uh, I first heard about Bosnia is when I was in high school. Uh, it was uh, five years ago. My teacher told me about Bosnia and Herzegovina, about what was happened during 1990, 1992 and until 1995 about the war. So I first uh, came to an, an idea to choose Bosnia because I want to know what actually happened. So it is best to know about uh, the history if we go to the place itself. It's a good place to visit for those who love nature. And I, I love nature. I'm a nature lover. I, when I was in... Uh, Mostar, there's a lot of uh, waterfalls like Kraviksa and Yakche, and also the rivers in Bosnia is really so beautiful. The water is emerald blue and full of nature. Yeah, that's it. So you arrive in Bosnia. So how how did your your holiday plan work out? Where did you start? Where did you finish? And what did you think were the nicest, the most memorable things that you got to experience? In, in, in that holiday time? In Bosnia, I, I first went to Sarajevo. I spent there for four days. And then after Sarajevo, I went to Mostar. I also spent there for four days. And the last the last city in Bosnia is uh, Banja Luka. So I spent total is uh, eight days, eight days, nine days in Bosnia. It's, a, it's more than a week. So in Sarajevo, I went I went uh, to Tunnel of Hope. It is uh, the, the, where I can... I can I get to know about uh, the war. I get I get to know more about the history of the uh, what happened in Bosnia back then during during 1992 and 1995. And I also went to the uh, Olympic Mountain where there was a game there, and it is famous before the war. And also I went to. Um, I went to the Baskasija. It is a city where uh, East Midwest. When you look at the right, you will see uh, Austro-Hungarian uh, buildings. When you look on the uh, on the left side, you will see the uh, Ottoman Empire buildings. So, like, wow! You you've been living. You you are sitting uh, in two two world. I mean, two world. While you were in Sarajevo, um, did you have the chance to try any food, or did you? Uh, try local food later. I didn't get a chance uh, to sample food in Sarajevo because I was a bit rushed in Sarajevo. We didn't have enough time. But when I was in Mostar, I was I tried I first tried um, Bosnian food. It is uh, pita, which is known as burek also, and also um, chavapi. And for for information, I am Malaysian, and our staple food is rice. So we can't live. With that rice, and especially for me, I'm a really a truly Malaysian that I can't live even one day without rice. I just depend on bread, like uh, like pita and chavapi, and I can't live because 
the food is really, really, really tasty, and I truly fall in love with the food. And also Boston coffee. I love it. It's very, it's different from Arab coffee. I am living in Jordan, studying in Jordan. And if I want to compare with Bosnia coffee and uh, Arab, I love Bosnian more. We we met up in Banja Luka. So I, I, I know this, I know the answer to this, but I'd like you to tell me again. Living in uh, Jordan, which is an Arab country, uh, they don't like spices. You're from Malaya, where you do like spices. Now coming to Bosnia, which is completely different again. What is there? Is there is Bosnian food too spicy for you, or less spicy for you? How did you react to to eating your your pita uh, and chavapi? I found that uh, Bosnian and Arab there is something they share some of uh, culture like food, because here in Jordan we also have chavap, chavap, which is, we call it kebab, and Bosnia we call it chavapi, right? So. I found that it's the same Arab and Bosnian. I mean, their taste, they are don't, they don't eat much spicy food. So you went from Sarajevo, you went to Mostar, and you went to Banja Luka. Um, from each of those three places, what is the most memorable thing that you saw or you experienced? So one one from Sarajevo, one from Mostar, and one from Banja Luka. In Sarajevo, uh, it's skiing. You know what? It's my second experience skiing. I, 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 the first one is uh, back in Poland, but it is my first time. And the second one is in Bosnia, but still I really cannot improve my skiing skill. And in Bosnia, I went to uh, Jelas Miksa for skiing. Am I, am I pronounce it right? Yeah. Jelas Miksa? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I can be Bosnia right again. <laughs> <laughs> and I took a ski lesson and seriously, when I went when I went to Yelas Niksa, there is a lot of people in there for skiing, and there is a sled. You can you can do a lot of things. And one day in Yelas Niksa is pretty enough. So I I spent one day there for skiing and also sled. Seriously, it's a very exciting experience. I love it so much because. I get to learn skiing because it was my first time learning with an expert. And the second one in Sarajevo is that I took a tour through the city about the war, and which is really the, the, the thing that I really wanted to do in Bosnia since I love history. And I started to love about history when I was in Bosnia. Before I hate history, seriously, I'm saying I hate history. I don't like, I don't like uh, memorizing dates, memorizing information, memorizing the events. But when I was in Bosnia, I started to fall in love with history because it felt like, oh, it's so amazing that I went to the place, I see this building, I know what happened here and I know what happened there. So it's what, oh my God, I feel like I'm living in a in the history, you know, I'm living in the past. Feel like I'm living in the past. I can see what happened and I can feel it. What was your biggest memory from Mostar when you went to Mostar? I went to Blagaj Tekia first when I, I took a tour in Mostar and I went to Blagaj Tekia first. And there is the rich monastery setting beside the river and it's such a beautiful place. Seriously, I was amazed where there is a um, dervish house and beside it is a river. I mean, what? Oh, I wish I could live there. It's a beautiful place. And after Blagai, I went to Pochitalia. There is a village. I don't get information about the place, but seriously, it takes uh, about 20 minutes to hike up uh, to the top in Pochitalia, in Mostar. And I can see the view of the Mostar. It's just amazing, such an amazing view, such a breathtaking view. You can see from there, it is an old village. Uh, which is from Ottoman uh, Empire, right? Yeah. And after Pochitalia, I went to Kraviksa, Kraviksa waterfall. And it is one of the famous waterfall in Bosnia, in Mostar. And uh, it's, it's amazing. And I love, for the na for nature lover, you should visit uh, Kraviksa. And that's all for Mostar. And then ah, uh, uh, the second day, I went to the old town of Mostar and I we spent in in old town one day. You know what? We went out from dawn and we back to home at dusk. From dawn to dusk in old city. Oh, seriously, such an amazing experience I had there. 
where you can see a lot of uh, souvenirs shop. There is a lot of coffee shop. There is a lot of restaurants which uh, serve uh, Bosnian's uh, local food and also coffee. So I get to taste the Bosnian coffee in, in, at a cafe near the Stari Mos, the bridge, which is the famous bridge in Mostar. And you know what? Uh, there is a Malaysia film uh, that shoot it at the place at Mostar at the Stari Mos. And I see, uh, and I watch the film, so I can feel it. <laughs> hey, then you, 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 you then took the train to go to Banja Luka. What was the train to Banja Luka like? Uh, after four days uh, in Mostar, I took train from Mostar uh, to Banja Luka, but I have to pass Sarajevo first because they don't have direct train from Mostar to Banja Luka. So the journey took about... I can't remember. It's about seven hours. So I first took a train from Mostar to Sarajevo. So I transit in Sarajevo. And then I made another tour in Sarajevo. I went back to the place that I used to visit just for pictures. And then I come back to the train station. And then I depart from Sarajevo to Banya Luka. So it's about five hours. It's a long train. And the view is uh, amazing. I mean, I love the view. And you know what? I want to say this to you. I bought this book. The author tell the story about the war that used to happen uh, in, Sar in Bosnia, especially Sarajevo. She's uh, Bosnian and she's, she used to live in the war. So I get to know more about what actually happened for emotionally and I can feel how, how hard the hardship it is. What, did you, what was it like when you... Uh... Saw Banja Luka. Was it completely different to Sarajevo and Mostar? My first expectation about Banja Luka, I thought it is not as uh, modern like uh, in Sarajevo. My expectation is wrong. I love the city of Banja Luka. It is uh, peace. I found it peace. And the people there is so... I feel like I'm welcome in the city. And I met you and Tamara, who took me on a tour around the Banja Luka. We have a quick tour. It's only two, two hours tour, but... Still, I I pretty satisfied with the tour. Uh, that at least I I know that my expectation is totally wrong because firstly I'm scared of going to Manila. I'm sorry to say this, but because you know I'm a Muslim and because I know that it's uh, in Republic of Srpska, so I thought that it's quite uh, dangerous. But seriously, my expectation is totally wrong and. I feel safe in Banja Luka and I feel welcome. Not only safe, I feel welcome. I feel like, oh, I'm not a normal person, a normal person walking in the city. I feel like, oh, I love. That's why I wish I could go back to Bosnia and I will surely choose Banja Luka. I wish I could stay in Bosnia for one month. It's my wish list, actually, but I don't know when I'm going to do that. But um, totally, I think I'm going to choose Banja Luka to stay. When you got back to uh jordan after your holiday what was the biggest impact that being in bosnia had on you because when we normally go back from holiday we sit down and we think wow you know that was like 10 days bang 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 seeing this seeing that what did you feel at the end of it when you when you sat down and relaxed and and looked back uh on on your trip to bosnia what was were they positive feelings, negative feelings, exciting feelings, sad feelings? You know what, uh, Malaysian, we have uh, multiracial countries. We have uh, Malay, we have Indian, we have Chinese. Same goes to Bosnian. They have uh, multi it is a multiracial country. They have Croats, they have Serbs, they have Muslim, Bosnian Muslim living together in a country just like Malaysian. So I learned that. And the second one is that it makes me feel like I should be grateful. Why should I complain about the things I didn't get? Since um, I have a good life, I have family, I have friends. So when I when I look at when I dig into the history of I mean history of the war that happened, and especially when I talk to the locals about how hard they told me that how hard it was living under the siege, is four years of wars, four years of living in crisis. It is not easy. It's totally hard, and people are so being desperate. I mean, despair. Live in despair. Live in the people are depressed. So I should be happy with what I have and always show my gratitude. Amira chatting via Skype from Amman in Jordan, with me here 
in the village just north of Banyuluka. I hope you found the video uh, interesting. If you did, please do like it. I certainly enjoyed listening to Amira talk about her feelings and thoughts about the country. If you do like the video, please give us a thumbs up. Please do subscribe. And if you are going to subscribe, also press that button so you'll be notified of every time we post a video here on the channel. And if you are thinking of coming to visit Bosnia-Herzegovina, do drop us a line. We might be able to help. The email is in the description box below. And this video has been brought to you in collaboration with Control Rent-A-Car, the number one rent-a-car company in Banja Luka. So if you're coming to visit Bosnia-Herzegovina, whether you're landing in Banja Luka or Zagreb, then please use the link below. Get in touch with Alexander, Artso as we call him, and his team who will be there to help you. They speak English and they've got lots of tips and ideas of where you can go when you come to visit this country as well. Control Rent-A-Car. Don't forget it. Oh, by the way, say you saw it here on the video. Until next time, this is David in a rather chilly late winter in Bosnia. We're expecting the spring at any time now. So until next time, stay safe wherever you are. Bye for now. <laughs>